Gary, welcome back to face, my friend. How are you? Are you unmuted yet, Gary? Unmute I am yourself, unmuted. Please. You, you are got good. Me? I got you, Gary. Welcome back. And the share screen button is you scroll the bottom of the screen, you'll see the green box. You got it. Okay. You so got the last week you, you told got the me you had up? a yep, the charts are Excellent. up. And last last week you said you had a lot to say. You know, not much has changed in a week. Um, I think the main feature is I've never, you know, well. The uh, all the sentiment surveys, uh, especially what the double A I I is uh, lowest level since ninety two or ninety three. Not a lot of bulls out there. Yeah, but that, be very careful of that sentiment is so much different from bull to bear markets. Uh, in yeah. bull markets, when sentiment gets bearish, it stops the pullback, stops the little corrections, and gets the yeah. markets rolling again. In bear markets, it stops the bloodletting, bounces the market up, relieves the oversold conditions before tanking right. again. So you have to be careful. And I am not saying we're not ending bear markets. I'm just saying we've been in 70% uh, bear market, about 30% bull market. And the, the amazing part of it is what's happened here. You know, the uh, I, for, I forgot his name, just set up. The American dream out of reach. Uh, yeah. Who just said that? Uh, I, I I've been blaming Jay Powell for two years on that. Uh, it, it's now coming to to note how behind he is, how wrong he is, the bubbles he has uh, created that are all popping. Uh, the question is, does housing pop? Uh, I'm uncertain, except to say, here is Lenar. Uh, here yeah. is floor and decor, uh, which is everything you put in housing, Whirlpool, uh, Toll Brothers. Uh, I can go on and on. So if yeah, the they've been really, yeah, they've taken 30, 40 percent hits with yields rising faster than most people thought. Well, here, here you go on that. There's your yields, which it, for yeah. me, I'm not sure I've ever seen something like this so persistent and unprecedented. Uh, there has been a an absolute cause and effect to what uh, we have been seeing. Uh, and uh, where she stops beats the heck out of me. All I can tell you is that the bullish areas are about as stretched and extended and overbought as I have seen. And the bearish areas are about as stretched and extended to the downside and oversold as I can see I have seen. But it still hasn't changed yet. Uh, a couple of days ago, I actually thought we'd start rallying some. And then we had another yeah. down day. I think we're probably close. That's the trees. My job is to get the major picture right. So maybe we bounce here. I'm not so sure the big picture has changed yet. I am seeing some climactic moves in some things like here's natural gas. Kind yeah. of feels climactic, though. It just broke out, so yeah. it may be climactic for the short run. Uh, I'm just been play, playing close to the vest uh, because we're dealing with the, mo the most news-driven, noisy market. I think I've said this before, but I think it's worse now because that was before the war. Yeah, Ukraine and Russia. Uh, yeah. So you just take your time here. Uh, be smart. Know what bear markets look like, and don't be in them. I started with charter. Because sometimes you get the most classic looking bull and bear markets. And it, sometimes the roadmap is simple. Riding an ascending 50 day, riding down a descending 50 day and every rally into it sells off. And nice. th those, those are your great clues. I love when people tell me technical analysis is voodoo and it doesn't work. Terrific. Meanwhile, all the account transfers that I am getting from so many people <laughs> yeah. are late are laden with this yeah 70 percent uh and hits this, on kathy wood stocks yeah and, and i can uh, go on and on and this is not to indict do you send anybody. thank you notes do you send thank you notes to the brokers never never or, okay and, I'm we, just kidding. and we never take on anybody else in the industry i'm always asked about others and i just i don't even discuss it 
uh, yeah. because the business is tough enough. Uh, what we just try to do is teach good rules of the market yeah. and how they work based on time tested from the greats of Stan Weinstein, William O'Neill, Darvis and the like. And yeah. I keep adding my own little wrinkles into it, uh, you know, every now and then. But when push comes to shove, when wrong, be wrong fast and be wrong small. And when right, try to run them out, which is very tough to do because even in the, you know, the oils and stuff that you've had some wild swings that would have taken you out of some of these commodity names a couple of times and then they get going again. So yeah. my best advice again is just never lose big. And in a market like the growth arena, and this is the one thing I'm proudest of myself most, I've had hardly drawdowns in the last year while the growth arena, which I'm a growth guy, has been absolutely destroyed. Uh, That's and, good and, stock and picking. It's just a matter of knowing when they're done and not knowing how bad it's going to get, but knowing when you're in a main downtrend and there's no reason to change. And I will admit, I took a couple of probes as I thought things were trying to put in a low. And in bear markets, you get great bear market rallies. Yeah. Uh, I was stopped out twice, but very quickly and very small. And it's a little lesson for me going forward. So, Okay. Who's your favorite guest on your radio show? Well, I, I've had Stan Weinstein on. Oh, uh, Stan. I had Still O'Neill. I had O'Neill on. Well, this is a while back. Uh, Stan doesn't yeah. do uh, too many interviews now. I had O'Neill yeah. on uh, many years ago. Uh, in the CEOs, I got to tell you, Scott McNeely used to run Sun Micro. Great guest. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we, we, we've had a lot. Uh, but lately, we've just been doing markets and complaining about Jay Powell and, and, okay. and socialism. So You think they're uh, going to go 75% like Brainerd, uh, 75 basis points in May? Um, it's talking about it. No, I, 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 my guess is that is 50 and, and just to show you, and most people don't look at this, I'm going to put up something here. That's the three month T bill. Yeah. Uh, Jay Powell is still here on fed funds. Uh, talking about just economic and, and, and financial malpractice by this guy. The reason why rates keep going higher is because he's still done nothing. And maybe rates on the long end could come down if they do something. Uh, so we'll see. Uh, we're in one of those moments where, look, I've been complaining about the distortions that he created. It turns out it is just massive bubbles that have popped, uh, whether it be the, um, uh, the marijuana stocks, the SPACs, the short squeeze stuff. And then the inflation, I believe Jay Powell is 75% cause of it. Uh, and then you get into Biden and Ukraine. That, that's the latest. The Russia-Ukraine really accentuated it. And they're still doing nothing. If I was Powell, I'd be at 1.5% right now, if not more. Okay. Um, we're we're going to nominate you, Gary. But before we do that, um, any concerns about the lockdowns in China also playing a role in yeah. you know some of the weakness here and plus uh, those shares just uh china's china shares were obliterated well everything counts uh there's your fxi let me uh elongate it a little bit there's your fxi um and their their economy has been heading south uh what no one talks about evergrand anymore that, remember that yeah. was big news yeah yeah to me like when i look at uh, let me get this up here uh, Alibaba here, and, and that's not even the old high. This is only going back to last February. It's right. just stunning. And again, from my first thing I wanted to say, it is a great lesson for every person uh, about just being smart and not getting Patient. married and understand that bear markets happen and they can be vicious. And I always talk about Citigroup which is still down 90% from its highs uh, of 2008, did a one for 10, and a bunch of companies went by the wayside. Uh, you just got to be careful. And then you got these bubbles. Uh, there's your Tilray climactic move up there. Yeah. Uh, I can go through stacks and left and right. 
the, these are the lessons that must be learned because if you can, in the worst of times, in the rough times, if you can keep your capital up near the high water mark, A, financially, you're so much better, but psychologically, knowing you don't have to make back 40% uh, after losing your you-know-what uh, yeah. it is a great thing. And there's a certain someone, and we don't mention them, that was making zillions uh, with a, a certain funds that's down 60% from the highs. And it's keep, they keep fighting and keep averaging down. These are the lessons you got to learn to just be careful of, uh, about all that. Markets don't like people. And uh, that's why you got to work Mr. hard at it. Mr. Markets, a mean guy. It, it really is. Um, and, and you just got to stay in tune. Uh, just so just I want to go through a few things that I think are very important going into earnings season. And okay, I think it'll, good. It, it'll dictate uh, Amazon right. uh, needs to hold 3000 right here. I know it's only a few days, uh, but really needs to hold 3000. Uh, Google needs to hold 2500. And I say this because I think a ton of money has been parked in these names. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft needs to hold right here in that 270 to 280 area. Apple, which is, I believe, the most parked. I really don't have a number, except it's been under distribution the last couple of weeks. 160, about 160. Uh, yeah, and that 200 day. Yeah. Uh, if these things get taken out, big, big trouble. Why? Because you're not going to get any help from uh, the Shopify's anymore. Look at the, the absolute destruction and the Roku's, uh, and the yeah. service nows, these were stocks that were leading. Uh, in less than uh, a in, year. They yeah, given all it's, this back. again, it's stunning. And it tells you when I use this terminology of over owned, over loved and over leveraged, always be wary of that. Because if the turns uh, over leverage starts getting less leverage, that's where it starts. Oh, they, yeah. they become over, less over owned. And definitely as it keeps going down, it gets less over loved. And then you get into what you're seeing right now. And th these moves down tell you just how much they were leveraged and owned in the big growth mutual funds that had their way uh, for so very long. And keep in mind, some of these things, look at the moves they had. That's service now. Here's Shopify. Yeah. And the, uh, that's come down more. And the worry is, is that these moves because of central banks and making it so easy, you just worry, is the, are these things going to come in here, you know, into, into these areas? And if they do, if I'll, I'll get this working somehow, there you go. If they do, there's going to be more pain. So every day I'm hopeful uh, that things are going to change, but it just hasn't. It's just accentuated. And now you got the Russia thing. So here's cotton. And I yeah. bring these up because it matters. Uh, here's yeah. corn. Here's yeah. uh, soybeans. Uh, yeah. Here's wheat. And I'm not a commodity guy, but I become a commodity guy because I think it, it, it matters a ton uh, to everything out there. Here's your oil uh, and what that's done. And I just worry about what are companies going to talk about as they move into earnings season because I know for a fact, up and down the food chain, um, price is going up. So okay, then yeah, the, the Fed, Fed's not going to be able to break agricultural commodities. They may be able to break economically sensitive ones, don't you think? Yeah. Like yes, copper, or yes. maybe oil. Uh, potentially. The but they can't is, print corn. You know what the problem is for the Fed, I think, now? I, I think they're kind of off the table in that the market's dictating policy. The yeah. Fed's at a quarter percent. The five years at 2.858. Yeah. Um, the 10 years at 2.9. And, you know, again, the moves have just been absolutely stunning. Uh, the 10 years gone from 1.1 1, 1 to 2.9 uh, since August, 10 months. Yeah. The and bomb vigilantes that, have definitely uh, had their lynchings. Yep. And, and there's just no let up. And I think part of that is a, a Powell so behind. And the European Central Bank, they said in the last couple of days, oh, we're not going to stop printing. And, and they haven't yeah. moved off their negative rates. So uh, it's not just us. It's the lemmings around the globe. So 
We'll just keep our eye on the bouncing ball and recognize the market's talking contraction coming up. And how do we know this? Well, it's simple. In retail, I have Best Buy, which is stuff you don't necessarily need. Uh, but in retail, you got Dollar General at highs, which is recession resistant. Uh, right. In retail, you got American Eagle Outfitters, but here's uh, Dollar Tree. Uh, the market is, even Walmart, the market in retail is buying up the most discount retail stuff while basically just killing. Remember yeah. when Crocs was a, a leading stock? Um, you know, killing everything. Then there's the semiconductors. Why are they important? They're in everything. Uh, yeah. Look what they've done to them in, in, in just recent. And the only redeeming factor is, you know, maybe you got something like this here, but that, that's in the context of a, a big bear market. So I, I look at the semis. I showed you housing and housing related. On the other end, utilities, defensive yeah, as can be. Yeah, even with a rising yield environment. And typically it should come down with rising yields, but because the right. market is buying so defensively, utilities are sticking up there. And then of course, you got your food, beverage, drugs. Here's your Hershey's. Here's your AstraZeneca. Yeah. Uh, so we have probably the most offensive market I have seen in a very long time. I um, keep waiting for it to change. It, it still hasn't. And every day I'm waiting for yields to back down. And we walk in today and we're up yeah. another, you know, whatever. So until it changes, it doesn't. And the next thing I'm looking for is the what I call the contraction trade. And that is the market, you know, snuffing out a big slowdown, if not more. And I, I don't know what will come of that, uh, but we're going to pay a lot of attention and just try to keep out of trouble and uh, wait for greener pastures and go from there. Okay. So uh, when it comes to being like in such a bifurcated market where you're showing opposite extremes, even within yes. the same sector, um, how do you do you play it? Uh, how do you play the downside? Uh, just be out, or do you try and capture uh, with some bearish ETFs uh, moves to the downside, Gary? Yeah, we, we we've done some of that. Um, the, the biggest issue on, on the shorting as of recent is you want you want if you wake up and Russia backs down, right. you get you know you so you're dealing with that news gym, but it doesn't look like they're going to. Uh, so you're always dealing with that. Uh, for me, though, uh, Bill O'Neill, the first thing he told me as I used to hog his um, uh, time at lunch every time I went to one of the seminars in L.A., the first thing he said to me and a few other people, if you are one of the few that really understand and can read bear markets and, and just stay away from them, you are ahead of 99.999999% of everybody. Yeah. And that's the first thing I worked on. And uh, we think we've got it pretty decent. And the only time I ever screw up is when I try to be too cute. Like I bought a couple of things trying to turn recently and got yeah. stopped out uh, twice. So yeah. Yeah. to me, just stay away. Uh, know that big fat pitches will eventually come around uh, and, and just be you know, smart about it. The one thing you can't hide is bull and bear markets if you know how to read the tape. So, and the, and the bonds, you know, most people, you know, thought they had balance by having 20, 30% in bonds. Huh. And that's yes. actually been the worst part of it, or at least as bad as uh, the equity. Well, there's your TLT. Yeah. Uh, there's your LQD. These are just ETFs yeah. for uh, investment. Why, why, bonds. Are, why are corporates weaker than junk? Because people still want higher yield. I'm not saying junk is strong, HYG, but it's not as weak as corporates. See, um, that's not making a new low yet. Yeah. Um, you know what? Beats the heck out of me why. I okay. think you may be onto something about the higher yield. Yeah. But I must think when all is said and done, if this worsen, worsens, uh, junk's got to take a big one. Um, yeah, I, I have has. said, 
I have said for a long while since Bernanke, uh, and especially in the last uh, two to three years with um, Powell, that I see bonds that should be yielding not in junk, that should be yielding 9%, yielding five, and things that are yielding uh, 2% should be yielding six. Uh, so, so uh, excuse me, the other uh, the ones yielding five should be nine and, and two six. Uh, and that's gonna eventually change. And I think you're seeing uh, some of that right now. Um, so even the bond markets have been, uh, you know, whacked. Yeah, sovereigns and munis now, Gary. Uh, you know, I think that we could run into some problems with financing on the municipal level. They've really cracked in well everything, across the country. Yeah, everything yeah. changes if yields keep going higher. It's it uh, cost the capital goes up, and it's tough to tougher to do all these things. And again, yeah. that's why I said to you every day. I'm looking, God, there's got to be some relief in, in yields. And every day they keep going higher and higher and higher. Uh, and I can tell you flat out, I'm surprised they're up again today, uh, like they yep. are. Uh, but that's the nature of the beast. It's the nature of bear markets, the nature of bull markets. And until it stops, until you get clues that it's over, it ain't. So and I will say that you were feeling like uh, that this could happen back in uh, back late last year. January that oh, uh, yeah. you know you know there were a few false starts before it really got in gear but uh since I've been talking to you you've been pretty cautious and well, didn't miss you, much on the upside you just had a, a rolling the first thing we thought of was the climactic runs in all the bubbles and yeah. that's the first thing we saw and yelled and screamed about it um and, and just just the other day uh when GameStop announced the uh this GameStop right here they announced the split. I yelled and screamed at everybody. I'm, Please be careful. Do not touch this. This is just the last vestige of whatever. And you can see it's already down about uh, 30%. But you see all these, this is all bubbles. And uh, they all return back to where they came from. It's And that was the first thing. Then we noticed just these growth names, one by one, topping out throughout the year last year, yeah. leading Amazon. to November, where they just clipped the living heck out of them all at the same time. And we owned a few things. So we got out of everything uh, in that November drop uh, right near the highs. And we, we ended up with nothing but uh, Microsoft and Google at the end. Or, uh, we didn't have Apple, unfortunately, because uh, they were holding up. And as soon as they started coming after them, we knew it was trouble and good night. And yeah. un unfortunately, the people that caused all these bubbles, the people that have caused all these distortions are still running the show. And therein lies my biggest worry. Uh, all they have been good at is creating another credit card with a higher credit limit to pay for their less credit card. And I think we showed you the last time, I'm gonna back away from the chart for one second. Uh, the biggest issues I had, uh, here's your central bank chart, which is outrageous. And I think also, and we show this, the margin debt. All right, we're still looking at GameStop. Must be on which, another screen. Pardon? It must be on another screen. You might have to oh, okay, do this is not I'm shown. still seeing GameStop. Okay, my bad. Anyway, All we'll right. go back then. Go ahead, Gary. I, I was showing the chart of margin and the chart of uh, the money printing that went in lockstep. And guess what's margins doing now? Margin is heading south. So okay. margin is your best friend in bull markets. It is a big enemy in bear markets because that's got to come off first uh, before anything else. And that's part of what you're seeing right now. And again, where she stops, don't know. Okay, Gary, any comment on Twitter? Um, I know uh, Charlie Gasparino wrote a nice article about Musk. What do you yeah, think I, uh, is going I, on there? Well, I, you know, I said um, the, when it was 55, you know, just be careful. Um, here, I, I, I don't know what ends up happening. Yeah. Uh, the bigger arbitrage, believe it or not, is Activision with Microsoft. 95 in cash. And you're not hearing a word about it. So there's two of them out there right now. Whether or not it gets done, I, I, I don't know. Uh, okay. I tend not to play, play these things. And now we're in earnings season, so I take a step back. 
I did want to show here. Here's the NASDAQ. Right. If it takes if it takes this out, you know, that means they're getting all the big names at earnings season. So just be wary of that. So far, it's holding up. Do you up. give it a chance for being the right shoulder? I see RS over oh, there. Sure. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah, could be. Uh, but th but yeah. that said, I go underneath the surface when I see the index and I see nothing but crap. Yeah. So, okay, so, I, so we're, we're going to need improvements. Sell rips is basically the theme I get from you. Yeah, this second. Or, or be, and, you know, return of capital, not return on yeah. capital. Uh, the S and the S and P stronger because of its makeup and it has a lot of the defensive areas also. Uh, yeah. and, and so you, uh, again, we're going to know a lot, I think in the next uh, two to three weeks, uh, especially with the fed doing whatever uh, the Russell uh, it has been the weak link. And again, you better, you know, keep this, uh, yeah. but the, you know, he, I'm just going to go through a few. Here's the socks. That is, really some bad news. I got to show this JP Morgan and Goldman. I mean, holy crap. Yeah. I heard some analysts on TV patting himself on the back. He said he was bullish and he was saying how right he's been. I'm like, what the hell is this guy looking at? Uh, so there's JP Morgan. Here's Goldman. It's yeah. just. They should uh, be doing better with higher yields, right? Yeah. Here's the regional banks right here. Maybe so there's some Russian uh, default exposure. That could ripple well. through things. Yeah, you know, here's that's the, something here's the RSX. Out there. Here's the RSX, yeah. which doesn't trade anymore. So yeah. uh, all I'm just saying is, is that be careful. Uh, I'm always a big believer markets do come around to where you really see big fat pitches. Anything that has tried to break out outside of the commodity space has pretty much uh, failed. I do see some things coming on, like a couple of hotels, Hilton and Marriott here. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to buy them or not. Uh, I'm hoping uh, that the oil prices here, I would love to see, you know, this happen, but we got to see that first. That would help. Um, I, but I think just, you will. But overall, you know, it's this market right here. Here is your agriculture. Here yeah. is your steel. Uh, here is your uh, gold doing better, though it's slow motion compared to some of these other commodities. Here is your shippers that may have another leg up, but they're trading very wide and loose right now. A little whippy. That's SBLK. Um, but after yeah. that, you know, managed care is on the strong side. Insurance more defensive on the strong side. A yeah. caterpillar and deer are showing up a little bit, but again, Ag, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm not going to get so thrilled. Uh, yeah. Just my best advice: it's a very defensive market and a very inflation trade market. And the problem is they're overbought. Yeah. All the other areas are oversold. Been waiting for a little change of complexion, doesn't happen, and then we get another day where the uh, yields are again up so just beats the heck out of me and i'm just trying to keep uh you know keep the feet on the ground powder dry and uh patient is all heck uh best way for people to follow you gary um garyk.com uh, we put up the radio show there We're on fox okay. business or fox news almost every day um with our little hits and what we've tried to do is be very consistent uh and that is main trends. Uh, and I always talk and I got these, this line from Weinstein, there's the forest and the trees. Uh, the trees are what's going to happen the next couple of days. The forest is the big picture. All I want to do is get main trends right uh, and define that. So if I say to somebody, I think maybe a near-term low is in, that's the trees. I'm looking for the major trends. And right now I've showed you them. Uh, the problem is they're accentuated to the upside and downside and, uh, uh, and frankly, in amazement. Uh, and that just tells you how much central bank uh, interference there has been. And these are the distortions you get. And uh, I'm hoping the guy retires, but he ain't going anywhere. And uh, we'll just keep having to deal with it. I'm just waiting for his next stupid mistake, which probably is he's going to uh, tighten too much into a recession. And that would be bad news. So. Okay, well, uh, Gary, appreciate you being here, and 
uh, in honor of the baseball season, Gary Kalbaum says, wait for your pitch. And go Mets. Yeah. Okay. So go. <laughs> <laughs> wait for your go Cubs. Okay. That too. Uh, all right. So Gary, thank you so much, my trading warrior brother. Uh, love your passion and energy and some great looks today. Thank you for having a giving spirit and sharing your knowledge and views with us on face today. I, I appreciate everything you guys do. Uh, the world needs to be educated to what uh, we are doing. And that is very simple. Uh, pay attention to price because that's how you get paid or that's how you lose. That's how people vote with their wallet, buddy. You got so it. I really appreciate you, Gary. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, I'll get a hold of you to set, keep you in the rotation. All right, buddy. Excellent. Stay well. Be well. Okay. Thank you. All. Thank you very much. Everyone, Gary Kalbaum. And you could join the team in 12 minutes on the morning edge. Uh, Gary, people enjoyed it. Monica, Laura, interesting. So uh, that's a wrap for face. And again, like I said, you could join the team in 12 minutes on the morning edge for the bias charts and really guys consider the trading funding program. It takes money to make money. And more than that, don't just count your pips, count your blessings. Adios. It's at Gary Kalpam on Twitter. Turtle in. See you guys. Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video.